Hello and welcome to the Capitol Planning Commission meeting. This meeting is open to the public with both in-person attendance at City of Capitola Council Chambers at 420 Capitola Avenue and remote attendance if possible. Planning Commission and staff are attending in person and remotely via Zoom. There are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting via Zoom and make public comment during the meeting is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, on the meeting agenda. The public can also live stream the meeting on the city's website or on YouTube. As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Spectrum Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and AT&T U-verse Channel 99 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Mondays and Fridays at 1 p.m. on Spectrum Channel 71 and Spectrum Channel 25. A recording of this meeting will also be available on the city's website after the meeting. Our technician tonight is Eric, and as a reminder, please turn off all your cell phones during the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> um, roll call. Yes. Commissioner Esty. Present. Commissioner Westman. Here. Commissioner Wilk. Here. Vice Chair Jensen. Present. And Chair Christensen. Here. And then pre Pledge of Allegiance. All right, um, item two, additions and deletions to the agenda. There are no changes to the agenda tonight. Thank you. Um, additional materials, item three. We did receive additional materials for tonight's agenda. Specifically, there were uh, nine emails for item 7A and one email for item 7B. Um, all of these have been added to the agenda packet and published online and distributed to the public via our newsletter. Thank you. Um, item four, oral communications. Members of the public may speak for up to three minutes unless otherwise specified by the chair. Individuals may not speak for more, more than once during oral communications. All speakers must address the entire legislative body and will not be permitted to engage in dialogue. Sereni, please write your name. Hi, my name is Goran Kloppich. Today at 6.03 uh, a.m. I made a call because I was walking uh, to the gym in Capitola from uh, where I live in Socal. I found uh, methamphetamine or cocaine at a gas station and I called the CPD. When I did that, the officer, I don't know what uh, he was thinking, he didn't uh, comprehend what I wanted to come across with, but I wanted to tell him that I found so I walked uh, to the, uh, to the station uh, to hand over what I found, and I was met with a lot of uh, anguish, you know, like he didn't, I don't know why he reacted like that. I was a little bit shocked, so I went back home uh, after the gym, and I uh, uh, called a friend that I know from the Naval Postgraduate School uh, to talk to him uh, what he thinks uh, I should have done. So I don't know what to do if I find stuff like that in the near future. Uh, I, I'm just not going to call any more the, more the CPD. Thank you very much. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Nope, hearing none. Uh, moving on to item five, planning commission uh, staff comments. I have some up, an update for you and the public. I just wanted to make sure everyone's aware that Capitola Avenue is scheduled to close for the bridge um, over Highway 1 starting Monday, um, March 11th, so this coming Monday. And then also on March 23rd at 7 p.m., Highway 1 will be closed in order to demolish the bridge. And it will be a closure from 7 p.m. on Saturday night, the 23rd, and all day on the 24th. Um, there'll be more messaging going out, but just want to make sure that everyone's aware of it. Um, and that's the update. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any commission comments? Uh, I have a comment or a question. Um, was there any um, training uh, coming up 
Uh, I know the League of Cities, I went last year, I think, with Mr. Essie. Uh, was there any training coming up or uh, any future activities that we can participate in this year or any other commissioners? I can look into that. There's um, definitely the um, APA, American Planning Association, California um, conference in the fall, and then I can check in on the League of Cities training. Thank you. I can also add that there's a local government academy being um, hosted by city staff and the city manager's department. Members of the public can apply to learn more about how local government works. Thank you. Thank you. And that class starts next week. So and folks can, how, how long until they, they cut off? The registration may be closed at this time, but that is occurring next week. Okay. So if anyone's interested, let me know and we could make that happen. Anything further? Okay. Moving on, um, consent calendar, item six. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered by the Planning Commission to be routine and will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. There will be no separate discussion on these items prior to the time of the Planning Commission votes on the action unless the Planning Commission requests, special, requests specific items to be discussed for separate review. Items pulled for separate discussion will be considered in the order listed on the agenda. We have two items, item A and item B. One, item A is 417 Riverview Avenue, and item B is 203 Fanmar Way. Anybody? I have to recuse myself from both due to proximity. Okay. And I have to recuse myself on one only. How do you want me to do that? Okay, so um, item A, 417 Riverview Avenue. Yes, I'm okay on that one. Okay. I make a motion to approve the consent contract. The owner is situated in just east on one. I'll second that. I'd also like to compliment. I like like to compliment the owners as well as city staff for guiding the owners into uh, keeping preserving the building as much as uh, possible while upgrading its uh, components to make it uh, more. <clears throat> it'll stand for a long, much longer time. Um, do we need a roll call? Commissioner Esty. Aye. Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Wilk, recused. Vice Chair Jensen. Yes. And Chair Christensen. Okay. Okay. Um, separate item. S item B, 203 Fanmar. You have to recuse? Yes, I'm recusing myself. Okay. So? Me as well. Okay. So, so I'll Wilk. make a motion to approve 203 Fanmar Way. I'll second. First and a second, we need ro roll call. Commissioner Esty. Recused. Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. Recused. Vice Chair Jensen. Aye. And Chair Christensen. Aye. It's approved. Okay. Um, moving on to item seven, public hearings. Public hearings are intended to provide an opportunity for the public discussion of each listed item as a public hearing. The following procedure is as follows. First, staff presentation. Second, planning commission questions. Third, public comment. Fourth, planning commission deliberation. And five, decision. Item A is 1400 Wharf Road, Capitola Wharf. Okay, um, thank you. I was gonna be recusing myself from that item and I'd like to read a comment into the record um, regarding that issue. Okay. I have to recuse myself as well, so how should we? <laughs> we need to draw some. Uh, we need to draw straws for someone to serve as the chair, since our chair and vice chair are recusing themselves. 
So we'll need to go grab the straws. But I think um, we could. Um, I, I think it, I don't know. Yeah, so we'll, we'll draw straws. And, but I think, um, Commissioner Jensen, if you'd like, I, I, I think we could do that after they've recused themselves. Yeah. All right. Um, no, go ahead. You had a statement. Uh, yeah, so just um, I'd like to quickly just read this in, and then I'll leave this uh, conference city clerk. Um, I've been advised by the city attorney to recuse myself from the item due to my voluntary role in the leader of the Capital Wharf Enhancement Committee. While I comply with this recusal, I express my disagreement in this decision for the record. It is a well-established practice that our city leaders, both elected and appointed, and actively to actively participate and lead volunteer efforts that, that benefit our community. Regret, regrettably, the decision to enforce a recusal in the instance sets a concerning precedent that may deter future civic engagement and leadership of community projects where there's no financial or fiscal in, uh, interest involved. I urge the city to reconsider their stance and advocate for more transparent and consistent approach in evaluating potential conflicts of interest. This current position contradicts previous allowances and participation and poses a risk in the spirit of volunteerism in the community leadership and that is vital to our city's progress. Consequently, to ensure continuity and clarity, I request the city publish its recusal analysis and an advisory notice. As an advisory notice, this notice should be made available to any current serving individual or prospectively seeking to serve any decision-making capacity for, to govern for the Political Reform Act. It should include all marketing materials such as city websites and applications for service and specifically provided as a notice for those currently serving or who may be fully aware who who may not might not be fully aware of the implication of this analysis i am providing a statement for the clerk to be included in the mini, minutes for this evening thank you thank you I just, um, before we pull straws, I, I just want to clarify that under, just in case anyone in the audience is not clear of how consent calendar works, if your item was either 417 Riverview Avenue or 203 Fanmar, those were both approved under the consent agenda, and um, but now we're going to move on to the regular agenda, so just to be clear. Um, so the, the rule of necessity for the March, this applies to the March 7th, 2024 Planning Commission meeting, public hearing item 7A. State law prohibits public officials from acting on matters in which they have certain economic interest. Two planning commissioners have disclosed dis disqualifying conflicts of interest in decisions related to public hear hearing item 7A. Without these conflicted members, oh, I'm sorry. Well. There is a quorum tonight. So tonight, I don't think I need to read through all of this to appoint the chair. I apologize. Um, Can I just nominate a chair? I nominate Susan Westman as chair. Maybe get a second. To yeah, I'll second that. We it's vote on that. Easier. We don't need to do it. Let's continue. Uh, you know, there's, is that plenty? I think we should pull only because um, the chair votes on all of this. We can pull. Okay. Fine with me. So, That looked awfully long. <laughs> Shoot. I don't even have an agenda. Did you have a yes, I have one right here. <clears throat> All right. So I'm gonna start by showing the animation that was provided by Fuse Architecture who's been working on this project. Can I ask one quick question? So Fuse Architects was hired by the city to do this. Correct. Yep. Thank you. 
this worked on my computer upstairs, but let's see, maybe it's, here we go. So um, the project before you tonight is for the, for the Capitola Wharf and all of the extra enhancements that will be included. The um, Infuse Architecture was hired by the city to put this package together of all the final details and how they'll work together. Um, and so they did some imagery, including both options for the donor panel walls, um, locations. They also show what it looks like at night um, with the lighting plan that they've proposed and how the gate functions in terms of currently the, it's pretty difficult to take off when, you, when we need to take off the archway, but this will just function and, and easily open up. So this is showing the second option for the panels with one on either side of the arch. And then the panel set facing Cooper's Beach. So I just wanted to show that before we go into the presentation. So I think that's good, Brian. Um, and we'll go to the next slide, please. So I wanted to start off with the staff recommendation as I'm changing it this evening from what was published in the staff report. Um, in When I started this, the review of the project, there was a recommendation by the City Council for this to come back to Planning Commission. What I provided in the packet I think was a bit incomplete in that there are quite a number of items that I did not include within the packet, and I think that it it requires, they, we, we want to bring the whole package back to Planning Commission. What was in the packet is really the, the overall items that we had Fuse Architecture work on, but there are other parts of the packet that, um, or the, the improvements that were not in that first packet. Another error, there was one error in the staff report regarding the benches. They are not the same exact benches that are seen throughout Capitola. This is a different bench. It looks similar to the benches throughout Capitola. It's much lighter, and it is actually affixed to the would be affixed to the wharf. So, just two a couple points of clarification. I've modified the staff recommendation, and tonight I, I am looking for approval on the viewing stations, light post, benches, tables, and trash receptacles, as we'd like to order those items in order um, to keep on schedule, but for tonight, I'm also asking that we continue the item to a, cert, a date certain, and we'll discuss that at the end of this item, um, to identify a date. But to first get direction on a few items that were raised in the staff report, and then we can go, go back to the drawing board, clean up the items so we're all on the same page of exactly what's being approved by Planning Commission, and bring it back to you in two weeks for all of the items to be in one place so that there's no question of what is included or is not included in in the future of the wharf at this point. So with that, we'll move on, but just wanted to highlight that. So a little history here. Back in 2020, the original Planning Commission approval of the wharf itself was approved by Planning Commission and with the request that staff bring back the, um, for review the pilings, the security gate, bathroom, and bathrooms. Um, in January 5th, 2023, major storm damage occurred on the wharf and um, on May 4th Planning Commission reviewed outstanding items. Those outstanding items went um, were reviewed by Planning Commission and there was direction that the City Council and staff look at the changes to the bathroom as well. And then on December 14th, 2023, City Council reviewed the package for the wharf enhancements. They directed staff to take the final design back to the Planning Commission. Um, and then later when the, the bathroom that was ordered came in, we also committed to bringing back the bathroom for final discussion on um, the exterior. So, um, so I'm gonna go into a lot of detail here. Um, so the first item is the artwork. The um, Sean Monahan of Bronze Work Fine Arts was selected um, to create 40 bronze art pieces that, that will be inlaid into the wharf deck. 
um, and create a meandering pathway to four viewing areas. Next slide, please. Also, Catherine Crisetti um, is a local artist who produces mosaic tile panels. Um, there's been, I think, two public outreach meetings at this point, and a, a third one is scheduled um, coming up sh soon. And these three images here are kind of the just some of the ideas that have come out of the preliminary meetings. Um, Catherine's been contracted to create six panels for the entry gate. And at this, during those initial meetings, I think the idea now is to have kelp along the pillars and then um, incorporate the shorebirds along the donor wall panels. So, so she's going to do four or six panels. At this point, I think they're still working through the final details due to the number of donors. And it's, it varies between four to seven panels for the donor wall and um, six panels on the, on the um, entryway because three sides of the columns will be, have panels. So here's an image of the entrance gateway, which I'm going to go into the details of that now. Um, this is just showing the height. So that's a human at six feet tall to the left. The top of the artwork is proposed right about at six feet. Um, eight foot to the top of the column, and then 10 foot at the very top of um, the post. And then I don't have the measurement for the very top of the arc, but I'm, um, I would estimate about 14 to 15 feet. Next slide, please. Um, the materials that are proposed for the Capitola Wharf archway is a bronze zinc um, or a type of steel. And right now we're working on the budget for these items. So the coloring will be the same, but depending on the, the pricing, um, what metal will be utilized. So um, in here, you're seeing the bronze zinc and the, um, the, the well, I'll focus on the um, column. There's the artwork is proposed or to be 18 inches wide by six feet tall, and then there's a perforated metal um, recessed, um, or perforated metal above it with the dragon image in it and the year 2024. And then on the left side, there's another dragon proposed that says um, the 28, or I'm sorry, uh, I think it's 1981, the last, the last time that there was major funding for the wharf, so 1980. Um, next slide, please. This is showing an image of the illumination that's proposed with the wharf um, for the artwork. So within the, the entryway, the mosaic tiles of kelp will be, um, there's a down-directed lighting that comes from the top of the column down, and then also there's lighting proposed within the donor panels. Next slide, please. So next I'll go into the recognition panels. So we're, at this point, I don't think there's a definite number of panels identified. I think it's going to vary between four and seven. Um, Fuse did a great job of showing where the location of these panels will be. Um, the, they showed within their rendering some artwork on those. Artwork, artwork will be finalized um, through the public process that's currently going on with the artist, but definitely on the donor panels will be the donor names and mosaic tile art. There's an idea of um, having fish, that uh, different size fish with the donor names on them, but I, I don't think that that's still a work in progress, So, and that will be going to the Art and Cultural Commission for final review. Um, the donor panels are proposed, so we're, we're actually, for tonight, for the Planning Commission purposes, it's really to approve the canvas in which the art could go on. And the canvas is proposed at four feet tall by three feet wide um, and four inch spacing. That's how it's shown in these renderings. Um, I think there needs to be a little bit of flexibility there because they're really trying to make this fit within um, the number of donors that have donated and the artwork. So, but location is, is something we're also seeking um, guidance on this evening. Is that picture to scale, so only four fit on one side? Of, for the, that size panel, 
four would fit on one side. And then there's the city recognition panels across on the other side. Um, the donor panels are funded through the CWEP program. And, um, but like I said, there, there could be up to seven. So we'd have to figure out how they would all, we'd have to figure out how they would fit correctly. If there's, there's seven. more than one location being considered by the program. So um, this is the, the information that it could be between four and seven is new information that I learned um, in the past two days. So it, we could have the panels, um, we could continue the discussion on the panels until we know how many. But at this point, in general, it'd be nice to get feedback from the Planning Commission of whether or not you'd like them in the entryway or on the wharf itself. That would be helpful. Um, so two city recognition panels, for sure. One of them will be from the 1980s when the wharf is rebuilt and we were required to keep that on site. Um, and then the new recognition panel tied to the current wharf update. Um, next slide, please. And this is sh just showing the, um, the recognition panels on the right, a better, cl more clear view. Next slide. And then the option two for the donor panels um, to be once you walk on the wharf overlooking Hooper's Beach, it's where the area in which the wharf is widened. Next slide, please. So next I'm going to go into the entry signs and the wharf to wharf monument. Um, so this is at the corner of Cliff Drive and Wharf Road. Um, and the idea here is to redo the landscaping in this area and have a new a new sign for the Capitola Wharf. We also, um, one item that we need to update into the plan set is two palm trees will be planted in this area to replace, there were two trees that were removed previously, um, and then the stop sign will have to be relocated. Next slide. This is an image of the proposed um, entry sign, and they're proposing to reutilize the wood from the wharf as well as put a bronze um, sign on top of it, which would um, they'd install stainless steel letters utilizing the same font that's on the wharf archway. Um, so it would give it relief of between the wood, the bronze, and then the lettering. Next slide. Um, and this is just showing an image of what that would look like. This is showing across the way right now that the wharf to wharf um, the end of the race, there's a monument there on the ground, and the idea is to lift this out of the ground so people see it, and it would utilize similar materials to what's going on across the street with reutilized um, wood from the wharf as well as a bronze wrapping. And Next slide. So within the entry sign and wharf to wharf monument, we're looking for feedback from the Planning Commission of whether or not you'd like the sign as it's proposed today. Or um, would you like to, the second option would be to utilize the repurposed wharf plank wood base and the stainless steel letters, but remove the bronze treated metal background. Um, or repurpose the, the wood base and attach a bronze panel that would have laser cut letters that with backlighting, so it would be internally illuminated. And then the fourth is to go with just um, cement formations that uh, similar to what you see at the Capitola Library. Um, and then here's an image of the bathroom, which was delivered and is that picture is from the wharf currently. Um, tonight we're looking for direction on the bathroom finishes of whether or not we should do some vertical wood planks to be to finish the bathroom or paint. Um, and then the suggested colors from Fuse are shown at the top. Um, and the, the wood product that we would use would fade naturally, so it would blend in with the wharf. Next slide, please. So the five items that I mentioned earlier that we are seeking approval tonight on is the, are the viewing stations, the light posts and poles, the benches, the tables, and the trash receptacles. And I have a slide on each of those. So first is the lighting. Um, there's 10 light poles proposed, and the, there's 10 out there currently, so they would um, be in the same location as the lights are now, but they're, the lights, the posts right now are attached 
to the railings, and so they would step out a little bit onto the wharf because they've got a base. Um, the manufacturer's name is Lumka, and it's the Urban Cozy Lighting. Um, these images, uh, they're actually both the same type of lighting. I re-verified this this afternoon. So um, the image on the left is the image that was put in the packet through Fuse. It has um, a dark gray color. The image to the right is the pre previously uh, proposed lighting. It is the same manufacturer. It's just different colors. It's a blue lampshade with a white post. Um, in talking with representatives from CWEP, um, the colors of the blue and white was something that the manufacturer provided for the rendering. Um, my understanding is that there's no real set color at this point, and it's really, we'd like the Planning Commission this evening to provide direction on the color of the lights. If you can go to the next slide. On this slide, these are the color options for the lamps, for the lights. And what you're seeing with the stars are the recommended colors from the architectural firm Fuse. But the Planning Commission, the choose any color that they'd like. So their recommendation was the dark gray. Um, here's an image of the viewing stations. Four viewing stations are proposed. Each will have two heads. Um, so one at um, ADA level. So a person on a, in a wheelchair could look out and use the viewing station as well as somebody standing. Um, There'll be a dedication plaque on each of these, so that um, for some the fundraising that went along with them. And one of the viewing stations will have a monochrome lens for a colorblind person. The next is uh, the benches. And I need to double check my number on this. For, I, th I thought it was 40 benches. So I'm going <laughs> to double check that number. I think it's supposed to be 40. but. Um, I've listed here the manufacturer and the style of bench, and this is what I was clarifying in this staff report. I had said that they're the same benches that you see throughout the village. They are not the same bench. They will be um, affixed to the wharf. They can be removed if necessary, and they're much lighter. This is the table, um, and also with these images showing a green base, they'll be a galvanized steel frame. They'll last longer than the paint. So the color is not true in terms of the, the base. We'd go with a galvanized steel frame. Um, next slide. This is the trash can design. And again, the color is not true. It would be a, a galvanized steel frame in order to for longevity. Um, next slide. So future items to be incorporated into the plans. Uh, there is a fish cleaning station water filling station, a foot wash, and bike racks. So those are things that I would bring back within the package for the next for the meeting in two weeks. So tonight my recommendation is to approve the viewing station, light posts with the color chosen, uh, benches, tables, and trash receptacles, and then to provide direction on the entry archway, dedication panel placement, signs, um, and the bathroom finish, and then continue the wharf design enhancement to a date certain. The two dates that I was thinking would be two weeks out on either March 20th or 21st. And I, I do think there was a conflict um, on the 20th for one planning commissioner that I heard of. So I think the 21st, if, if the three of you are available. So that concludes my presentation we have Fuse here who is also going to come up and say a few words and then representatives from CWEP as well. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Uh, let's take these one at a time. Let's just um, start with item one and just talk about the things we're asked to approve and not go into some of the other things. We'll do that next. So are there any questions of staff on the viewing stations, light post benches, tables, or trash receptacles? You know, I want to wait and hear from Fuse Architect and the uh, group that raised the money to purchase these before I have any questions. Okay. Uh, I, I have a question or two before we get into that um, presentation. Um, so the, the lighting is 
down lighting, right? We're not, we don't have to worry about dark skies or anything like that. It's dark sky compliant. Very good. If you, if you go, the luminaires can be adjusted. So on that question, if you go back to the slide that gives the parameters of the lights, are they 60 watt LEDs? Is that what that implies? Or that means 60 or 120 volts you can run at. I mean, how bright are these things? And I assume they have to be LEDs by code, right? Yes. There you are. Yeah. See the LIO dash 60 slash 120. Does anybody know if those are 60 watt or 600 watt or how bright these things are? My understanding is that please, you can please use lumens. <laughs> my understanding is that they can be adjusted to. Um, so we zero. Can we turn them off at night? I mean, we're we're destroying the earth with you know, unused lighting, and we got 10 of them on our wharf. I don't think it's a good indication to the youth of uh, the community that we're wasting, you know, precious air. That's my personal comment. But we should minimize the power that these things use, my opinion. All right, we're still on questions. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't have any other specific questions like that. So, okay, let's go ahead and uh, go reach out to the public can start with the uh, Fuse Architects, if, the, if you have a comments or presentation. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Dan Townsend. I'm with Fuse Architects. Um, my business partner, Dan Gilman, is back here. Uh, we're the design team uh, for the Capitola Wharf. And first off, we just are um, grateful uh, to have the opportunity to work on the wharf. I've been coming to the wharf since I was three, I think. Uh, so this is um, mo more than just a design project for us. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time when we were awarded the contract in studying the wharf, uh, the history of it, uh, where it came from, the design behind the arch, the columns, uh, the whole thing. And we met with city staff, uh, we met with CWEP members, and um, got a lot of feedback from the community events that have been happening. Uh, so our proposal is, a, um, hopefully is a reflection of all of that research that we have uh, done. And we feel like the proposal is, um, uh, fits within the parameters of what we've heard and gained feedback for. Uh, there's a lot of details uh, in, in it's. It is an arch. It's, uh, it's when when we we studied the previous arch, there were some things in it that we took away, and we said we must keep these things, and those things were the fact that it was an arch, um, the the text, the font. We liked the font. We also liked the detail the ornamentation that's on top of it. And we also like the meaning behind it, the two dragons and the pot and what that means for the community, the symbolism behind it. So we've kept all of those things. Um, the size of the columns is slightly different. Uh, we felt like that was uh, um, a good move and an improvement. That's our whole goal with this design process is to get feedback from all of the parties involved and uh, try to make it better than it was. And we think the artwork, the mosaic, um, is a huge improvement uh, to the message that the Capitola Wharf sends and the, the entryway. Uh, we also took some time, as you noticed, to come up with an arch design that swings. So it, as Katie mentioned, it doesn't have to be removed for emergencies. Uh, the gate that we show sliding uh, with the Capitola seal on it, um, our understanding is that is open 99% uh, of the time. Uh, so that's why there's very little detail in it, because it just won't be closed only for emergency purposes. Um, but again, we're just, we're very honored to be a part of this and um, we're here to answer any questions and provide uh, any other additional information you might have. Thank you. Well, I, so my attempt to just talk about benches and lighting isn't, doesn't seem like it's gonna work. So any, does anybody want to uh, we'll open this up to uh, both items? Yeah, so the Hi. Capitola Wharf Enhancement Project, I think we've got a representative, Gail Ortiz. Can we ask Fuse questions now or later? 
I think let's go. They both had presentations to, to provide, and then I think we can go into questions after. Good evening, staff. Good evening, commissioners. I'm wondering if it might be best for me to address my concerns or our concerns, our thoughts about the things that you want to vote on tonight and wait until the next meeting and address those at that meeting, or would you rather we address all of our comments about the whole design tonight? I personally would like to uh, talk about just the five items that we have to vote on. However, I, I suspect there's a lot of people who just want to talk about everything. So I'm going to open it up and with the notion that, if, you know, if the audience can realize that this is going to go come back for another discussion, but we do have to decide on those five items. If we can focus on that, that would be better. But I'm not going to limit it to just that. All right. Well, then I'll give my, my whole um, presentation. I am representing our whole committee. So, and we've uh, been talking with Katie, and I think we've come up with some really good uh, suggestions. She's really moved the needle quite a bit in the last few days, and we appreciate that. So, uh, just to be clear, the things that CWEP will be funding on the wharf are the bronze fish scavenger hunt that is on the wharf, the mosaic work at the entry gate pillars and the donor wall, the entry gate art installation only. So the part of the entry gate that actually installs the art, we will be contributing $8,000 for that. All four of the uh, sightseeing binoculars, the 10 lighting standards. Uh, just as a side note, it is our uh, general, we voted uh, on our on, at CWEP and uh, the majority would prefer to see uh, muted colors on the wharf. So we would prefer the slate or, or a color such as that. We the majority voted down the blue. So just so you know. Um, the benches, we understand that there are 30 benches, but there may be more or less. We're not sure about that. Um, tables, um, there will be four ADA compliant tables. Trash receptacles, 10 to 15. The water filling station with the foot wash. Fish cleaning station. And half of the bike rack cost, which is about $5,000. The city will be paying for the other $5,000. The things that the city will be contributing through its $250,000 approval on its December 4th, 2023 meeting are the entry gate, this part of the scavenger hunt that is um, from the foot of the wharf all the way to um, the bridge, st about Stockton Bridge, and I think we're going to talk about that a little bit more next week. Uh, half the bike rack, the wharf road entry sign, and the paver improvements. Um, the installation of the sightseeing binoculars, lighting standards, benches, tables, trash receptacles, filling a water filling station, and the foot wash. Those are things that the city will be installing for us. Things that we see that have not been funded at this point is um, what will happen with the bathroom, whether it's reclad or painted. Additional costs for the fuse designed elements, whatever that comes in at, the entry gate, the monument sign, and the wharf to wharf sign. Um, the Wharf to Wharf Monument, I should say. The city-sponsored panels on the left of the entry, which indicate the, the two times that funds have been used, whatever you guys need to do on that, and landscaping. The points that we would like to make are that, um, we, that we have been working off of estimates that amounted to $336,500. We understand that those were several months ago and that costs may go up. There's been a little bit of confusion about the $75,000 that we put aside for the jet ski storage facility. And we said we would put that aside for a year and those funds would be kept, um, you know, we're, we are not keeping our funds. The wharf to wharf committee is keeping our funds. We don't have access to those funds. So the wharf to wharf would keep those funds until we've decided what we wanna do with the wharf in the future. If by any chance the things that we are funding now end up being more expensive, we maybe have to use some of the funds for, because we want to make sure that the things that we've spec'd are, they're high quality, they'll last a long time, they're best value for the city, and we want to make sure that those get purchased. Um, the entry gate, we, we recommend that, could, could we put up the um, entry gate mosaics? It is the, it's both our, opinion and the, the recommendation from the artist who I spoke with last night that the mosaic work go all the way up to the cap, uh, eliminating the piece of metal that is at the top of the mosaic work. Oops, it was back there a little bit. Um, maybe there's a larger picture of it so people could see it 
Yeah, that looks like a good one. There we go. Um, it's the it's the we're we're proposing eliminating the part that it has the uh, is it the dragon and the metal on it? I can't see that far. I forgot my other glasses. Uh, and having the mosaic go all the way up, and that's something that we feel that the planning commission would would need to make their judgment on. Also, it is the desire of the artist that the stone, the fluted stone on the edges be reduced to four inches. I think it's specced at six inches, and she would prefer that the mosaic work were a little bit wider in order to really portray the kelp forest the way she would like to. Um, the donor wall, we would prefer, and so would the, well, yeah, we would prefer, and so would the artist prefer that the donor wall not be lit wherever it ends up. Uh, we, I, I think we agree with um, Commissioner Estes that there's enough lighting in our world. We don't need more. Um, also, the artist is asking that, well, we, we would prefer option one where all the panels are at the beginning of the wharf instead of option two. Uh, and we're hoping, and she's hoping that they are not specced convex because I don't know of a better way to say this, but when birds sit on top of it and it's convex, you can imagine what might happen. Uh, and she, she would prefer that did not happen to her artwork. Uh, and it would also be harder. Well, she doesn't have any substrate that's convex, so she would have to, you know, fabricate something that would definitely add to the cost of that. Um, as far as the number of panels, my, my discussion with her last night was the, she thought the panels would be two feet wide by three feet high. They would, there would be six to seven of them. They would be four inches apart, and uh, they would sit about four to six inches above the railing, which is at 42 inches, um, so that people don't have to get on their knees to see the, their name. Let me see. I want to make sure we've got everything in on this. Good. The viewing area, so viewing areas, um, since there is not, I'm not sure whether the next, the next two meet, the next meeting is going to have a schematic of the whole wharf. Uh, do you know? Um, I, I think we can provide that. So I think it would viewing areas just in, in general where they would be. Um, so we, we've been talking about um, the, the scavenger hunt fish on the deck would start at the foot of the wharf. They would meander over to the right a ways, and there, there would be the binoculars, a table, a bench, and a trash can. And then they would veer off, and they would go over to the left, or it could go left and right, you know, you know, and then, but they would meander down the wharf. There are four, there would be four stations, and there would be those four elements at each station, so, and then one at the foot of the, at the head of the wharf. And we hope that the commissioners would, would agree with us that that, is a, it's a nice destination. It's um, combining elements so that we don't have elements scattered all over the wharf. And there's some respite and free areas where people just get a chance to see the ocean and the beach, which is what they're there for. Uh, the sightseeing binoculars, the one thing we want to double, triple make sure is that when they're fabricated, the donor plaque stand gets fitted into it. They have, they, you can add on to that, and we want to make sure because if it doesn't happen, putting it on later is not going to look good and it's going to cost us more. So we want to double check and make sure that happens. Um, and CWEP will provide the actual plaques. If, if the sightseeing binocular uh, manufacturer does not provide the, pla the donor plaque, we would pay for that. Um, we're, we've heard from a lot of people wondering if the benches are going to be in the same spot and it sounds like they're going to be down the wharf looking out. And we wondered what's going to happen uh, with the plaques that are currently on the benches that are somewhere, uh, probably at the courtyard or wherever they are. And um, we're, we're just speaking for the community, wondering about that. And maybe we could address that tonight or next the next couple weeks. Um, the lighting standards are same concern with the binoculars to make sure that when they're fabricated, they, the a manufacturer has the ability to put a, pl a plaque holder on that, and we want to make sure that happens at the time of fabrication. Um, the bronze fish, 
Uh, I think we can talk about that next week. That's really an art and cultural commission item. Um, the bathroom, even though we're not funding the bathroom, we just had to put in our two cents and say that we would really hope that the planning commission clads it instead of paints it. Uh, the water filling station and the foot wash, we're hoping that that will be on the schematic for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we can see where that is. And we're um, wanting to make sure that the city understands that uh, we need to see, CWEP will need to see the invoices or the bids for all CWEP funded things before they are paid. Um, or, you know, before they may be paid by the city and then we would reimburse the city, but we would need to make sure we feel a strong fiduciary responsibility to, the, to our huge amounts of donors and, and we want to make sure that the funds are spent in the way that we told them they would be spent. And then finally, we want to find out if this is approved, if these things are approved tonight um, and there's additional costs, what will happen? And after tonight's uh, approval, if there are any changes to design or selections, what will happen? And, and if there are any changes to the selection for these four components tonight, we definitely want CWEP would like to know about them before their um, bid or before their, before their bid, because it would save the city a lot of time. Um, Jerry Jensen and Jill Palandrani, I'm not sure he's here tonight, but um, those two are the ones that worked on the current uh, pricing and bidding, and, and really the city needs to work with them on the specifics. I know Jerry had some, did you got the, um, so there were, there were several uh, corrections that he made to, to your thing. So I would hope that the commission tonight instructs staff to go ahead and make these, to work with CWEP to, to start that process right away and not spell out any particular actual objects because they are not right in, in the staff report. We're not there yet. We're not quite there yet. And we need to make sure that they are, they're what we spec'd out to begin with. Does that feel okay to you, Katie? Does yeah, so I actually, I received the update from Jerry in enough time I and I um, put the updated specs in those slides. Thank you. So they are, they are represented tonight of the correct Great. slides, but I will double, triple check to make sure that we get the list correct, so. Um, Great, thank you. Does anybody have any questions from CWEP? I think, if you're going to be around, I'd like to go ahead and get all public comment and then and then go back with questions. I'm here. Thank you. Are there other other members of the public who would wish to uh, address this topic? Good evening, Karen and Hannah. Um, while I am a member of the CWEP committee, I'm have some comments, just my personal opinions, which um, may or may not differ from CWEP. Um, it's okay if we don't just address the items? Yeah, on go ahead. Okay. Um, and if, if you could put your name on the okay. list so we have your spelling of your name yeah, properly. Yeah, I think, yeah, he knows. We're gonna <laughs> to, uh, now that we have normal public comments, if we can limit this to three minutes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, on the light poles, so that is on item one, um, the, one of the pictures shows the poles that could accommodate banners. And while there hasn't actually been discussion about it, that I see in the report about the possibility of there being, um, those poles to, to support banners. Um, so my personal opinion is no banner poles that banners are uh, an issue that are very hard to manage, they're expensive, they get stolen, they get blown away, and to have the poles there and not use them just, just seems unnecessary. So they aren't really specified, but I know that it's kind of been addressed and then it was in one of the photographs. And if the contractor's buying them and he sees a photograph of the banner poles, they might order those. And Anyway, I'll probably speak to some of the other issues um, when the, at the next hearing, but on the um, location of the uh, panels, um, I, I agree with everything on lighting. It should be absolutely minimal. The people that spoke at the meeting said that they wanted to see the wharf as utilitarian as possible, and any lighting, if there is lighting that's illuminating any artwork, it should be minimal and it should be able to be turned off at like 
9.30 or some reasonable evening because the people who live around and look down at the wharf don't want to see a bunch of lights, and it is, and it makes it a more of a, an attractive nuisance. So that's my opinion that they should be um, minimal. Um, as far as the location of the panels, um, would it be possible to approve the shape and then as the design and as, as the design of the wharf continues, um, because if you look at that picture, and I think that Fuse did an awesome job in showing the graphics so that we could really get an idea, but it's very narrow at the beginning and then it widens. And it, perhaps, if, especially if we're looking at seven panels, people are going to be wanting to move from one to the other. And um, it could be that a much better placement might be more like option two down the wharf a little bit. So. Hopefully, perhaps the actual decision of the precise placement could wait a little bit. And uh, then maybe mock-ups could show whether they're blocking any view. Restroom, definitely clad, because I, <coughs> Venetian court people, they've been telling us that, that's, that they want it, to see it clad. Um, and I think that um, my time is almost up. The recognition panels, maybe they don't need artwork especially if they're not all together, it might be a little more confusing. They'll be a little more utilitarian, um, like uh, the city, and I'll keep everything else to the next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Chair Wilk, I, w I would like to, I hate to interrupt the public comment, but I would like to emphasize that getting all the comments tonight would be preferable because we really want to come back with a design that addresses everything. I, I, I would hate to hear new items brought up at the next hearing where we're really trying to listen tonight, hear everyone's ideas and come back with something that really reflects what we heard. So if we, if we could, tonight I'm looking for action on five items, but otherwise I think hearing uh, feedback on the, any, any design concerns related to the wharf, I'd like to open yeah, up those I'll discussions. Okay, I just want to make that clear because uh, the last speaker referenced adding additional comments to the next hearing, and if there's more. Oh. Yes, yeah, so I just want to be clear that we'd like to hear all thoughts on the current design if possible. <laughs> so that, that my dilemma has been, you know, trying to get everything all at once, and then suddenly we have three limit, three minute limits. Um, and I just throw in, it would take one second. Not okay. crazy about the logo on the gate, the sliding. I think it look, might look better, just cleaner, and everybody knows it's Capitola. So that was my only other comment. Okay. Are there other public comments? And we won't limit it to the five items. This is the first time I've had the pleasure of speaking before the Planning Commission. My name is Lori Hill, and um, yes, I participated as a, part, as a part of the CWEP efforts, but I'm standing here as an individual commenting on um, the entry to the, to the wharf. Um, Fuse, Fuse did a dynamite job. I, I just, I can't speak any louder about that. Um, it is the best rendering of anything that we've seen come forward with regards to the entry there. Uh, one could quibble on, you know, little, little elements of the design, and I'm sure that that'll all work itself out. But the functionality of it is brilliant. Um, the gate is clean. I, I, too, would prefer not having the city logo on the gate. It says Capitola Wharf over the top. You know where you are. <laughs> uh, so I like the, the gate features. Um, I love the, the mosaic inlay. It is just, it's, it's beautiful. Um, and if for some reason we need to remove the, um, the dragons from the top of the, the pillars, maybe they could be up in the archway somewhere because they, they do reflect um, the Venetians. They reflect what was already on the wharf uh, when we had to tear the pillars down. Um, I, I like the messaging of, of the dragons. Uh, there was a lot of comments during the CWEP process with regards to tradition. And for me, tradition, when we looked at what was brought 
brought to us as examples by the, um, the design consultants initially. They brought us material from Southern California that was Art Deco, it was glitzy, it was pastel colors, and the community said, no, stop. But for me, that doesn't necessarily mean we need the kind of concrete pillars that we had before. So thank you, CWEP, for a wonderful design. Uh, and the restrooms, please correct the baby blue, the periwinkle. Uh, and my preference would be the cladding as well. Uh, that shouldn't be the first thing that you see on the wharf. It just should be a part of an important element that we're grateful has been added. And I'm confident that our mosaic artist will um, artfully address those beautiful um, opportunities to the right that um, my understanding is that, that that wing wall with those panels needs to be there because it's sort of... Um, it's hiding some things that we don't want to see. And I think that having the, the panels as designed by um, Fuse was brilliant. And I'm counting on our mosaic artists to handle the donor slash art element um, with, with the same elegance that I've seen in our other designs. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? We will then close public comment. And Chair Will, um, if I could, I could uh, clarify a few items. Please. Because I'm sure the, the, there are a lot of questions. So I took some notes. One point of clarification is, um, so the bronze art that will be inlaid on the wharf will, will be inlaid on the wharf. There was a um, discussion on providing the same bronze artwork to be inlaid from the uh, corner of Lift drive coming up wharf to the wharf. And at this point, um, the city, we cannot move forward with that because it would be in the sidewalks and we don't have the funding to update all of our sidewalks at this time. So I think it's a great idea, but that, that won't be included. And I just want to make sure that's. Um, and I spoke with um, Gail earlier in the day and let her know, and she that's what she was referencing of an, one more update. The other is the pavers right at the entryway of the wharf. It also doesn't make sense to include those at this point because that the street itself is in really bad condition, and that's something that would come at a later date when the street is actually repaved, and um, and it's also not within the scope of the wharf update. So just two items that I want to be clear that those won't be moving forward. Um, just um, confirming, yes, the benches will face outward. Outward, they will um, be oriented as they were previously, but unable to move. The plaques along the wharf and the plaques in the benches, we have fantastic documentation on those. So we are going to be bringing back those um, plaques throughout the wharf and trying to get them in the exact same locations. In the one area that um, the wharf used to it meander a little bit differently, and now it's wider. We're going to have to, they, those will have to be in a different location, but the plaques will be coming back. Before the big storm, we had inventoried every plaque and taken pictures, so um, we're feeling really good about that. In terms of um, the banners on the light poles, I spoke with um, Commissioner Jensen earlier, and that model that they've chosen, they can actually come off. Um, so at this point, it would be if, if the Planning Commission is supportive of having banners on the poles in the future, we can order them so that the banners will have the poles, but they won't be utilized until we have like a, a banner policy in place and how those would be utilized in the future. Um, so it's an option to those poles. Um, it was recommended by CWEP to include the banner poles, um, but if the Planning Commission is not in favor of those. We can order the same exact um, light posts without the banner poles. And lastly, in terms of uh, just billing and transparency, we'll be working closely with CWEP and um, making sure that occurs. So that um, within our, we've, I think we've got a contract and we'll make sure the language is clear and working through that. Typically when items come before the Planning Commission, we really don't focus on funding and money. So I, I would like to keep that separate. And um, I'll be discussing that with 
just how we go, just following the contract that's in place. And I know there is there are some parameters for signing off. Um, so we'll continue to work together and be transparent in these next steps. And I just um, wanted to bring that up, but I don't think that's the purview of the Planning Commission tonight. So with that, I think that answers um, the questions that came up during public comment. All right, let's move on to commission deliberations. Now we can ask questions and okay. discuss. I'll, I'll start uh, with a few uh, picture of the entry and all the, the uh, chosen metals and colors and all that stuff, including the dragons. So the original one that we're replacing slide it's probably good enough it doesn't show the material selection but the in the original one that we're replacing the dragons are actually on the ark or they're somewhere else anybody know they were on this so you move them off the ark to the top of the columns right. okay and then um, the choice of colors and metals uh, a silly question but you have dissimilar metals there i don't know about electrochemistry between bronze and steel but you wouldn't want to create a rusting situation right off the bat because of the uh salty air that we're in and then i i don't know how you pick can you get, like describe how you pick those different metals and colors and things like that the other dan dan gomez fuse architects um yeah so it, it was kind of uh given options it was in it was presenting either as a bronze option or as a coated steel, stainless steel option. So that was the alternative, whether it be the idea is that the finish, the same color tones, but there was some, definitely some options there. Um, those dragons are currently on the columns. And I'm curious if anybody knows what those dragons mean, what they stand for. They're actually sharing a pot with a fire in the center of a pot. And it means peace, prosperity, and community. So we thought it was super cool to carry that over. Kind of fitting for Capitola, so we were really liking it. So in the current, well, yeah, the current design, I guess it's still standing, those dragons are on the columns, not on the arch. Correct. And the fire that we would hope to get the art of the fire would be under the center of the arch, right at the bottom. It's that little middle section that drops down. Yeah. Got it. And a symbol. see what you're that. talking about. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Is that it? Um... I guess that's it for what your design. Yeah, thanks. So do we all want to talk about the arch or do we want to, how do we want well, to Well, I was going to give Paul the floor to ask all those questions and have his discussions about um, primarily, let, let us just focus on the five, shall we think? And then we can go back. No, it's not. That's not working. We're going to just discuss everything, get all your thoughts, all your notes out here. I like, then, your, I, I like your idea of the five, because that's one of the actions, right? And then we the, well, that's the actions we have, but there's, go there's back comments and questions on everything. So there's two ways to do it. That we could just focus on one, then go back, or it's very difficult to get people to limit their comments to once they get started. Like, you jumped right on the arch, and that's not one of the five. I know. So, <laughs> so it would just go, go for it. You, you just, let's get all your comments in, and then we'll move on to Susan. Okay, so it, I, I guess um, this where the viewing stations are and the fish walk, I'll call it, um, that will be presented next time. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Do you, one thing about the meandering is we're definitely going to be doing a lot of public outreach about the future uses at, along the wharf. So we want to be careful about where we place, where we choose at this point. I know where I was going too, is we have to consider what we might possibly do in the future, although I'm sure these viewing stations can get moved, but the fish probably can't be as easily removed because they're inlaid, I presume. They're not sitting on top of the planks. They're, they're inlaid. Yeah. Um, does it, <laughs> the two dates, eight, uh, what is it, 20 or eight? 1981 and 2024. Does anybody know what they mean? If you don't put a legend there, I mean, if I'm a if, a, if I'm a tourist and I see those two dates, I'm going to go, okay, what? I got to go Google like what they mean. 
To the left is will be two panels for the city dedications. One of the city dedication panels is from 1981, the last time major funding was for the wharf. So that okay. it's there. They'll figure but, it out. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, you already heard my rant about the lights. Um, but I haven't, well, I'm anti-lights on anything except the, the ones that we're actually installing. Um, there's no need to light up the the donation panels or the city panels that like who cares at night it's this is a wharf that's used primarily in the daytime um uh, do we, <laughs> the introductory sign which is today about this big sorry that's probably about three four feet wide is now going out to I, it's hard to tell the scale's not on it but it looks fairly massive to me yeah that thing there I've been told that the purpose of that is to identify where the heck the wharf is. And I'm thinking to myself, well, this wharf is 866 feet long. I think the average person could figure out where it is pretty quickly. So do we really need to have such a big thing at that location or even the, in the little pillar thing that moves the wharf to wharf plaque up? I don't, I didn't, I don't understand that design, but we, we can talk about it. Okay. I'm done with all my ranting and raving. But we can come back when you've got some more. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll start with the arch since we're going to talk about that first. Um, I do agree. I, I would get rid of the City of Capitola logo on the gate. Um, I think it's a different design, different font. It doesn't, you know, it feels to me like it was just put on there. It says Capitola Wharf. Everybody knows it's the city of Capitola Wharf. I don't think uh, you need to have that additional signage there. Um, I like um, uh, the overall design of it. I assume that there is going to be, uh, needs to be some flexibility because they haven't bid having this arch built yet. So, um, you know, and I think costs are going to dictate what the materials are going to be. Um, uh, to make all of that work. Um, I'm not so enamored with the, the dragons. I think that they could be incorporated somewhere else. Uh, you know, we're going to do artwork out there. Um, it would be nice for me to see the artwork be able to go all the way to the top of those caps, again, uh, for lack of a better term. And, um, you know, if the artist... Uh, feels that the sides um, should be four inches, not six inches. That would be fine with me too. I, you know, I think that uh, we're hiring an artist to do this work, and uh, while there's some limitations on how big it can actually be, giving her a little flexibility is not not a bad thing. And at this point, I don't think we even know what the exact artwork is going to be on there. I think that's something that. Uh, we'll end up talking about when um, it comes back to us at our next meeting or uh, whatever the Arts and Cultural Commission decides to do. Um, I agree about the lights. I don't think there's any necessity to have, uh, you know, lights on there at night. Um, uh, on the donor panels, I assume, again, that's an item that we're going to talk about later because we don't really even know how many donor panels there are going to be. So I don't think we're in a position to pick the location that they're going to be located at tonight. Uh, sounds like that's something we're going to have to wait for. Uh, I agree with you about the entry sign, uh, you know, the Capitol. It does seem awfully massive and large to me for uh, being a directional sign. Um, you know, I don't mind something going up there. Um, that area is the one where we took out the two pine trees and we agreed we would put back trees there. And so maybe something a little smaller that would fit in and work with the trees would be better. Um, you talked about the lights. Um, for me, I think the light poles ought to be sort of inconspicuous and fit into the view. So I would go with the dark gray color, not have them be a fixture that's going to stand out being white and blue. And um, 
I would like to see them without the sort of banner pole extensions on them. I think that's simply going to create a place for seagulls to sit and do what they do all over the wharf. I would rather see them, you know, shorter, um, not the entire banner. Can I ask a question on that? So what I understood is that you can, you can order them and then just have that option. So I assume like they thread out or something and you can have the poles, but if ever you, there was an event where you wanted banners, you'd, you'd have that option where you could thread in the little pole and all of a sudden you've got a banner option. Right. The way I understand it is you don't have to do it with your initial order. That's something that can be added later that the city's looking at doing a banner policy uh, that's going to include, you know, the entire city, not just the wharf. And we wouldn't want to spend the money to buy them if the banner policy is not going to allow them. Uh, so it seems to me we could start out with the shorter pole and then, you know, add the longer one if there is a decision to have banners out there. And, um, you know, for me personally, um, you know, Karin spoke about it, and she's been in the village for a number of years. I can't remember how many times they've tried to put banners up down in the village, which has never been successful. They have been stolen. They fall down. They So um, right now I would like to skip having the banner option until the city has a policy there. It's not like we're going to have a parade on the wharf. No. I don't think we I'm just trying to – I'm thinking of saving costs. If there was an option where you could just – you know, you, you you buy it, and and then if ever you did need it, you could you know you didn't have to buy a whole new pole. You just put no, in the. I, I think they said that. Well, I'm not sure what they you'll, said. You'll buy them now with the shorter pole. If you decide to have a longer pole later on, you can order those and add the longer pole. You won't be buying a whole new light. So, um, it, the light fixture, it's just an add-on for the banner pole. So it's the it would be the Without the banner, there'd be the pole for the lighting and the arm that comes across. If we purchase the option, there's an additional pole that ties into the lighting pole for a banner. So um, Is that removable? And it's removable, but it does cost more. It's an additional option on the, on the lights, but um, it, is, it is removable, so it wouldn't have to be installed. So it's a question of if... If it's clear that we're never going to have banners out there, we might as well save a couple bucks and not have that option. But if there's an opportunity that perhaps one day we might want to have banners, we don't have to install that little banner pole. We can we can just have that as, as a bucket full of <laughs> yeah. extensions in the back room somewhere that we one day may want to use. Yeah, but with the um, for tonight and play, like hopefully to place an order for the lights, it would be good to have direction on that. But yes, we would need to put together a, a special banner policy, and there is the issue of seagulls. But we have pictures of that the pole, the pole with the. Could you bring that up? The light pole with the mm -hmm. where the banner goes and where the. How, how does that work? So, and I think we ought to hear from city reps about this because they're paying for this. The ban they're paying for the light. Good point. I would like to see it nonetheless, if we can. I mean, the thing with banners is today they're mostly made of plastic, which deteriorates and gets in and out there, they're going to get into the ocean. I think it's a really bad idea, personally. Yeah, I do too. I don't think CREP's going to uh, have a problem with omitting the banner part of the light pole. I think there's been good reasons why we don't want to do that. I count on the polls for you? This is the man that knows the most about the polls. Okay. Uh, my name is Joe Palandrani. Uh, <clears throat> those poles have slots on all four sides. If you can imagine, they're going to be a kind of a rectangular pole with slots on all four sides. And you could put anything in those slots. The actual donor slide or the donor marking will be a, an attachment that slides in and screws in place. And if you want banners at any time, you could buy them at any time, slide them in a slot and add them. You don't have to buy them with a pole, and they can fit anywhere in the whole length of the pole. I mean, there's there, if uh, city, I think it was Long Beach, has those poles, and they have uh, power supply slots for phones and everything else. So you you can electrify them and do do whatever you want. Our our goal was to put a basic shaft, an arm, and a light, and then add a little a little donor plaque mounting. It also can be slide 
and uh, the poles that we ordered are going to have special, or the ones that we recommend are, are going to have a special paint to hold up, to help, to help them hold up in a fog environment, <coughs> salt, salt fog environment. They're also going to have bird spikes on the arm so, so birds can't land there. And our goal is, is to give you an efficient pole that's going to last a long time. And the light is not going to be seen. It's going to be from the bottom down. So we're not going to light the water up adjacent. The arm's going to keep the light on, on the actual wharf. So, Joe, you're an electrical engineer. You can answer my question about how many watts and how you know, are they fully dimmable? They have, I think it's rheostat control. You can go to almost off to almost to bright. With an app? It's, you can get Bluetooth options also. Yeah, which is, you know, yeah. our goal is to have a, like a medium setting and try it. If it doesn't work, it's 10 light poles. You turn a knob on 10 poles, it's a ladder. Okay. And I'll be glad to go down there a thousand times and adjust them whenever you want to for free. <laughs> <laughs> that was very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, I think that's, that's most of what I had on my list that we're going to be discussing tonight. This is the color palette for the lights, and um, so the, the ones on top have a smooth finish on the light posts, and the ones on the bottom um, are more of a rough finish, and this is the steel gray or the steel dark. I think the images were showing the steel dark, but um, I'm not sure what the preference is. If, if you could comment on which, which light color. Does well. CWEP have a, an opinion? <laughs> um, so, oh, steel dark. You know, a bright galvanized pole over time will age to kind of a dull gray. Mm -hmm. so this starts at a dull gray. And it's just a kind of, a, we call that an invisible pole. And in the smooth texture? It's, yeah. Smooth, yep. I think that's the idea. That's what it says, a smooth finish. Yep. Uh, if, if it's touched with a dirty pen, that marker is going to be there. You have a smooth finish, you can wipe that off. And also the smooth finish is, is going to help when we do have salt fog accumulation, salt accumulation, the rain will clean that. Or in the summer, maybe an occasional hose to clean it off, clean the salt. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you're looking for a, uh, a um, consensus on the color of the pole? Yes. Yep. I would agree with them. Yeah, I would go with the dark gray. I mean, the architect picks that color. The CWEP people want that it's color. It's unanimous. <laughs> it's an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> it should all be that easy. Okay, I have some comments. Um, let's start with a monument. Could you bring up the picture of the monument? <clears throat> um, I don't know. I'm not even sure that why it needs to be there. When when I looked at that rendering, I said, oh, that's the Capitola Wharf Apartments. And um, it's it, it, it's not educational. It doesn't say Capitola Wharf this way. It's not in front of the, I just, I think the whole thing is unnecessary. I like the idea of the, putting the palm trees there um, and that should be enough. So those are my two bits on the monument. Um, with regards to the donor panels, um, I'd be curious to know what they're covering up. Lori mentioned that they're covering up someone's site leak thing. I, I got the impression that no, someone had also mentioned that maybe they were blocking views. Some electrical equipment on the right-hand side as you go down, it's uh, some big gray boxes. I, I don't know if they're transformers or what they are. So those boxes will be, right now it's in a wooden box. It's um, not to code. Those will be brought up to code. But yes, the donor panels along here, as proposed, would hide those. 
more. And I don't know if Kailash wants to add anything to that, or is, is that, I believe the electricity panels are going to stay in the same location, but will be in an updated box. I guess my, uh, well, do we, do we also know how big the lettering is for the donors? I mean, So the lettering is going to vary. Um, I, the idea that I've heard um, is that the fish size will vary based on the donations. And so there'll be three different sizes of fish and it'll be incorporated on the donor wall as art. But that might be, no, is that? So uh, based on the new gate entry pillars, the things have had to change and the, and the artist has had to figure out new ways. So she's decided to put the kelp uh, the birds were going to go on the pillars, but now they don't fit on the pillars because of the narrowness of them. So um, she's switched over, and the birds she would like, but this is something that's going to be decided later, but her latest thought is that the birds will go on the donor wall, and the donor name plaques will be made out of fused glass, I believe of different colors, that will incorporate organic shapes that go into the sand on the bottom. It'll be sort of like a, a beach scene that goes all the way across. And so some of the larger donors would be in the sky above, maybe in, I would imagine, in blue fused glass. Um, and she was talking about organic shapes. But I think if you, we give her two more weeks, she's going to come up with some really good designs. Although I have to say that I don't believe it's the purview of the Planning Commission to... Uh, pick the design of this. It's the Art and Cultural Commission, but I thought you would want to know where we're headed with where she's headed with that. The reason I asked is because I um, I was listening to uh, Karen Hanna and talking about maybe moving those donor plaques further down so that it's not it's not so crowded right at the entrance. I thought that was a good comment, and so I was wondering how big they are. Could they be smaller? Do they need to have artwork on them? Um, should they be be moved down, you know, just to acknowledge the, the donors further down the, the wharf and open that area up. The donors do have been told that they are, it, it's going to be on a mosaic wall so that, you know, the donors contributed knowing that. So I think that's a decision that has already been made. But um, you, they could go further down. The reason that we didn't recommend them down further is blocking views. Just blocking, you know, more garbage down, you know, get it, get it done with before you get onto the wharf. And then go onto the wharf with the, you know, seeing as much as you want. What about the comments about the curve nature? Yeah, the curve nature. The, she really recommends, hopefully, that we don't go with the curve because she doesn't have a substrate for it. We don't really. See, it would cost us a lot to create a substrate for that. Also, um, they could be hit by strollers or bikes. Even more, you know, they're they're more vulnerable. I think so. Okay, so my comments on the on the donor panels then are are. In in concurrence with CWC WEP. Um, with regard to the restroom, I agree with the comments that we should go ahead and try to find the vertical wooden planks. Um, I am concerned, uh, well, I guess we're not going to talk about costs, but obviously you're going to work about uh, getting multiple bids. Um, with regard to the, mo well, the mosaic going to the top or not, um, I don't have a strong opinion on that. With regards to the lighting, um, I kind of like the downlit mosaic, but uh, having listened, I, I think I agree. We don't need the yeah, people use the, the wharf in the daytime. We don't need we don't need any extra lighting. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I agree that uh, we should remove the logo. Um, that logo changes over time. Um, that hasn't always been our logo, so um, I don't think we need it on the front gate. Um, so many notes. Um, so, all right. So now you need you need specific comments on the viewing stations, the light posts, the benches, the tables, and the trash cans. So the viewing stations, um, I agree with CWEP's recommendation. I don't think there was any controversy there. I like the idea of the concentrated areas, you know, meandering and having the, the group of, you know, trash can table, viewing station, and then move on to the next one. I think that's an excellent idea. Um, I think we talked about the light posts. 
the style of the benches um, seem to be consistent with what we've had before, and they'll uh, they'll work well with the plaques. Uh, not, I don't think the tables are lovely, but I think fine. Uh, tables and trash cans, really no comment. So um, any other further comments back and forth about the monument or anything else? Viewing light post benches, tables, and trash can. So those items we have to actually do a motion to approve or what? Yeah, that would be great if we could do a motion to approve. And the color that I heard was the steel dark and the smooth finish mm -hmm. for the lights and whether or not to order the banner. But it sounded like not to order the banner is what I was hearing. The well, it sounds like the... You don't need to because they're right. automatically designed to hold them or not. Any comments about benches or tables or garbage cans? No. no. Yeah, so the only only change I'm hearing is the color. So, so I'll, 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 I'll try a motion. Please. Okay. So I make a motion to approve... 10 of the light standards uh, to be dark gray without the banner pole. Steel gray. Steel dark. Steel dark. Um, that the benches be consistent with the design that we were shown tonight, um, and they will be attached to the wharf facing out. And... Um, the number is going to be 30. Forty. Forty benches is what I saw. Forty benches. I think a certain amount of them are funded through CWEP and the rest are funded through the city. Okay. But forty total. So there's going to be forty benches, thirty funded by CWEB and ten funded by the city. Because they put in their thing that they're funding thirty benches. Um that um uh, the uh, garbage cans be as shown in the design uh, in uh, a neutral color, not the blue that we saw. Uh, and How many of them are there? Is it 10 to 15 on CWEP? Is CWEP funding them all? Or does anybody know? It's my understanding that CWEP is going to fund we have a comment. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the email that I have with the correct quantities, and then I can better help with this. But the furniture is all hotbed galvanized frame. So it's good. The, the, all the furniture and the trash cans, all the framing on those are hot dip galvanized. So it's a gray color that's gonna fade to a to a dark gray. So there's no color at all. They're just uh, ash wood. It frames the trash cans. Ash wood you sit on on the benches and the tables. Okay. Uh, do you have any comment about whether CWEP is funding 10? 30. Uh, we're we're supplying 30. 30. Trash cans? Uh, 10 trash cans, 30 benches, Okay. four tables. All right, we got 10 trash cans. <laughs> okay. Okay. And if we need more, we can always go back and ask them to fund more beyond the tent. Yep. I have 10 light posts, 40 benches, not all funded by CWEP, mm -hmm. portion by city. By them and 10 by the tables, them. I've got four, and then 10 trash receptacles. Okay. So those are the items we need to deal with tonight. Yes. Thank you. So that is my viewing stations. Uh, oh, in the viewing four, sta four viewing four stations, viewing stations um, as shown on the plans, uh, that will have uh, a place they'll install a place for the plaque to go on the viewing station. And the light post will also have a place for the plaque. The light post will also have. I have a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Any further discussion? Let's have a roll call vote. Commissioner Esty. Aye. Commissioner Westman. Aye. And Commissioner Wilk. Aye. And I think we all ought to thank CWEP for all the work they've done of raising all this money to enhance our wharf, which is 
going to be a very important part of Cap Four. Here, here. <laughs> and if I may, may I give a summary back of what I heard for design changes to be brought back to Planning Commission? Um, so I heard two of the three commissioners talk about bringing the mosaic to the top and removing the dragons from their location. Um, and it would be fine with me if they want to add the dragons in the upper part or do come up with some other way to have them there. I would just like to see the artist have the opportunity. To yeah. There might be an opportunity in the archway. It seems like the dragons were important to everybody. Um, the fluted stone will have fuse look at and see if that can be decreased to four inches. Um, no lights on the donor panels. I'm not clear as to lights on the pillars. So there's no lights, no lights on, on the, the lights, on, lights the on the pillars. Okay. Um, make sure the benches are facing outward, but that was in the motion. Um, remove the city logo from the gate. The wharf sign, I'd like more clarity there. I'm hearing the wharf sign should be smaller or don't include that at all in the packet. And I'd also like some clarity on the, um, I don't think you talked about the wharf to wharf rock. So, yeah, I would <clears throat> I would just leave the existing things there and plant trees that we talked, You, I wasn't here, but you talked about last year or the year before. And I would leave the, the original plaque, the wharf to work plaque, on the ground the way it is today, not build a little pillar. I don't see the point in the pillar. But. And I think for me, you know, we do have some directional signs in town. You know, if something wants to go up somewhere, you know, they can have a sign and say wharf this way. So if, if the purpose of it is to be a directional sign, we could look at having, you know, a small directional sign somewhere that's appropriate. Um, but I don't think the larger sign saying, you know, Capitol of Wharf uh, needs, needs to be there. So remove it from this project, yes. the two signs. I agree with what Paul said, which is you don't need to do anything. Just leave, this, leave the, the, the Wharf to Wharf signage as it is. It doesn't need to be a ra raised pillar. And, uh, and remove the Capitola, Mall mon or Capitola Wharf monument altogether. It does kind of look like the Capitola Mall sign, too. Like I do it. agree with Peter. It makes it look like that's the name of the apartment building. Okay, but plant plant the two trees. Yes. Okay. Um, I think, let's see. I, I think that's clear. I've got great direction. Thank you. Oh, the other one was uh, in, in the meandering. Meandering. Consider future. I don't know how you're going to do this, but so I'm going to. I'll, I'll talk with um, CWEP and the designer about right. You know, we are starting this process of what is the future of the wharf going to be, and so if we can, we'll have to talk about how to decide on that. I think if um, ultimately, if there was a site at the very end of the wharf, we might want to hold off on that last location until we've worked through what what the use is going to be out there and design, but maybe. We'll, we'll talk about that and we'll bring back something. That's something you can talk with them about and then at our next meeting we'll have some sort of plan with options mm -hmm. on it that we can yeah. consider. Okay, thank you. Okay. We move on then to, uh, well, let's bring the other commissioners back in. The, the direction on the restrooms was to, was to collab them in wood. I haven't heard anybody say they didn't want to clad wood. Maybe the wood. Okay, what's happening? Maybe I need to go too. No, it's only it's only Peter. I need to go too. Hmm? No. Capitol Avenue. So Commissioner Wilk and I are recusing ourselves yeah. from the next item because we both live. 
Commissioner Wilk and I are recusing ourselves from the next item because we both live within 500 feet and uh, thus are presumed to have a conflict. All right, item, are you moving, are you ready? The applicant is uh, in the bathroom. Just, just a moment for the applicant. You ready? I think we're ready. Okay. So item 7B, 413 Capitola Avenue. Uh, this is a new residence project uh, for planning commission consideration uh, under a design permit, a coastal development permit, and there's also a parking variance proposed. Uh, and internal to the new residence is a junior accessory dwelling unit. Uh, this property is located actually right across from City Hall. Uh, just under 1,500 square feet and is in the mixed-use neighborhood zone. Uh, so this is the street view of the existing building. This is a, a cottage slash um, design studio is probably its most recent, recent use, and the proposal is to uh, demolish that existing building. Um, this is a site plan of the proposal. So this is true north. So up on the page here is, uh, is true north. Uh, the, the faded orange is the building footprint, and the brown is a deck proposed at the rear. Uh, you, and I'll use the pointer here to point out permeable pavers for the driveway. Um, and then there is a proposed walkway around the north side of the, the proposed residence. Uh, these are a couple of clips out of the uh, title sheet of the plan. So in the upper left, we've got a perspective view of the two-story residence. Uh, on the right, we have uh, a representative image of the proposed materials and palette, um, highlighting a smooth stucco uh, finish on the exterior. And then there are some indigo blue painted wood trim features and several arches, copper downspouts, and a uh, maple stained front door. Uh, on the bottom, uh, the applicant provided a, a streetscape uh, so you could see how the, the proposed design would fit in with uh, adjacent buildings. Uh, just walking through a tour of the floor plan, I'll use the pointer again. Uh, to the right here is covered porch into a, a front entry hall. Uh, the property is in the flood zone. So this is uh, a, a bit raised, about two and a half feet or th about 30 inches above uh, the existing grade. To the left, you've got a one-car garage that is down on uh, just about the existing grade, uh, so a need for a few risers to get up into this entry foyer. Uh, up the stairs would be the primary living, and then uh, through a, a, a door in the, at the other end of the entry hall is uh, the junior ADU access. And then up the stairs on the second floor, a family room, two-bedroom, kitchen, and then uh, another bit of uh, short stairs for a loft access and a proposed loft in the rear of the upper story. 
Um, bringing back this slide just to talk about setbacks, uh, this area is called out in the, in the zoning ordinance as being uh, a unique stretch of Capitola Avenue from the trestle uh, up pa just past uh, the Avenue Cafe in which the Planning Commission can uh, basically determine setbacks uh, as a level of appropriateness with its surroundings for these lots because they are uh, significantly smaller than average lots within the city. Uh, so the setbacks being proposed uh, for the project are uh, 10 feet from face of curb, which is the code standard at the front. And then along the north side, uh, there's a proposal for a three foot wide setback to provide little bit of access to the rear yard. At the rear yard, uh, the applicant's strategy was to uh, try to mirror uh, and reciprocate the setback on the other side. So you can see the edge of the building on the other side of the property line, which ranges from about four to seven feet. And uh, so the applicant settled on six feet for their rear setback. And then along the south side, um, it's a bit of a complicated situation with uh, overlapping parking and utility easements and jogging property lines. Um, so the proposal there is, is actually to touch the property lines, but as the right angles of the, the walls jog in and out, they do um, provide a little relief off those property lines as well. Uh, talking a little bit about the, the variance, I'll get into uh, the proposal here is to have one parking space where two are required. Um, I'm not going to read all of this, but I highlighted a few. Uh, so we're really looking for, with a variance, is some unique limitation inherent with the property, size, shape, topography. Uh, and we're also looking uh, under B here, we're looking at um, bringing the property back to parity. So uh, if there's some privilege enjoyed by other properties uh, or <clears throat> if a full standard would be applied, would be penalizing a property. Um, and then also not to grant a special privilege. So getting into a bit of the analysis with this project and property specifically, the lot size, uh, 1,455 square feet. So when you're taking a look at two parking spaces, you've got a footprint of 400 square feet. And on that ground level, you, you're uh, counting for 28% of the lot. Uh, and so the proportionality, you know, even a, a relatively small 2,800 square foot, 40 by 70 lot, uh, that's double of just the ground space. Uh, so there's a limit in just what can be done in terms of ground floor layout. Uh, the flood zone, a little bit more of an indirect impact, but uh, certainly impacts the layout and adjacencies uh, relative to the ground floor. Uh, the lot depth, uh, probably the easiest one uh, to point at in terms of limitation. Uh, because the lot is only 23 feet wide at the front, uh, tandem setup is really the only way this could work. Uh, but with an average 48 foot depth and then accounting for a six foot front uh, and rear setbacks and uh, on the front, I mentioned a few slides ago, the setback is taken from the curb, but from the property line, it is six feet. Um, so with a, a loss of 12 feet on the front and back, you've got 36 feet of depth. You can't accommodate 40 feet for a standard parking space. And then just the general irregularity of the lot uh, is the, the final factor. So 23 feet at the front, uh, there's no parallel lot lines and the lot uh, tapers and jogs in a couple of different locations. So to prove it further, uh, the applicants uh, design and architect team uh, went through a couple of iterations of what would a tandem garage look like. And I'll just call out that the, this, these tandem configurations even uh, utilized a substandard nine by 18 parking, uh, foot parking spaces. So going from the left, if they uh, arranged that on the right-hand side of the building, um, they didn't really like this substandard arrangement because of uh, what it did to the, the junior ADU. It really limits the junior ADU. One in the middle uh, really just bisects the floor plan and, and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, given the, the flood plain, um, this is not a functional floor plan. And so they decided to uh, just request one standard parking space uh, and a variance for um, reduction of the standard by one. Uh, when we look at other actions along this uh, stretch of uh, Capitola Avenue, um, 
401 Capitol Avenue was was given a, a variance to allow no parking in 2015. Um, different set of circumstances, but the lot size and configuration was uh, was certainly part of that analysis. A 322 Capitol Avenue, very similar, uh, was also allowed a variance for no parking. And then just recently, um, we had uh, earlier this year a request for a floor area variance to provide all of the parking, um, but nonetheless a variance granted in related relation to parking. And then just looking around the neighborhood, um, maybe the majority of, of properties don't have uh, what would be considered compliant parking. A lot of them are in some kind of a legal non-conforming situation and many of them don't provide a parking space on the property. Um, one cleanup item I have uh, is just that uh, in going through some of these iterations, um, the plans that were attached to the staff report didn't account for a full 10 by 20. Uh, so I've, I've plotted that here in the blue. Uh, I've talked to the applicant about the options uh, for this, uh, how to solve this, because we do need to fit a 10 by 20 parking space in here. I've also talked to the building official. Um, this garage really doesn't need a secondary door, so removal of the stairs is, is probably the easiest option. Uh, may not be preferential, but um, Additionally, there's other options in moving this wall uh, back a little bit and adding a beam because uh, it is carrying a load overhead. Uh, so we're asking to add a condition that to allow the staff to just work out an interior solution to, uh, to provide the full 10 by 20 foot clear garage. Um, and then uh, I need to make another uh, Amendment to condition number 20. Uh, so recently, state of California has um, superseded local authority for uh, filing deed restrictions associated with accessory dwelling units and requiring owner occupancy. Uh, but in discussing that with the city attorney today, uh, I was informed that that doesn't apply to junior ADU. So adding C to uh, number C to Condition number 20 that's in the staff report is a, another amendment. So with that, with those two amendments, uh, I we are recommending approval, and I do believe the applicant is here and prepared to make a presentation, and I'm available for questions. Thank you. Can you go, go back to your one about the 10 by 20 garage? Where's the beam? So we, we were just talking about solutions. So if this wall were to move back about a foot mm -hmm. uh, and the staircase was narrowed from three and a half feet to three and this door was moved, you've got a, a situation where the load was coming down vertically but it, it would have to transfer laterally. Um. Hear from the applicant. I don't mean to interrupt you, just speak directly into the microphone, that the sound guys. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Brian, for your help. Um, shepherding this uh, project through to this point, and good evening, commissioners. Um, I was hoping maybe we could put up the slide that shows the um, materials. I think it was on page 110 of, of your documents. Um, this project obviously sits directly across the street from where we meet tonight in an eclectic neighborhood with a mix of both commercial and residential structures. The proposal was initially inspired by the simple, colorful forms, materials, and elements along Capitola's iconic beachfront, blended with a more restrained Mediterranean palette, comprising of crisp whites, watery indigo blues, copper and bronze metal details, washed wood tones, and hints of terracotta. CAD drawings often appear flat. However, the proposed project has an articulated form with a stepped facade, recessed entry, and upper balcony, added trellises, arches that recess and have inset tile, 
breeze block providing a variable difference in shadow across the sides. And, and all of these elements offer architectural interest to the street facade. The form of the house is a direct result of the constraints of the site and desire to be respectful to adjacent neighbors at both the sides and rear, while adding a JADU to the town's housing stock. This prompted the setback exceptions, as well as the variance request reducing the home's parking to one space. Um, if you could add the diagram with, uh, with what we looked at for the. We explored many options to try to meet the town's parking requirements. And as Brian pointed out, um, what we're showing actually is even substandard and would require, would require additional um, dimension to be taken off the setbacks, especially at the rear, which was a concern to us respecting that neighbor who has a tiny little sliver of um, outside space there. Um, it also, if we moved the tandem garage around on the on the floor plan on the property with the floodplain, either eliminated the option for a JADU that could also qualify as an ADU because it is one bedroom a living, and a separate living area, not just a little studio um, apartment. So <clears throat> I think after looking at all of the different configurations from a space planning perspective, we decided that the best approach to provide a JADU, a functional single car garage and access to an upper level uh, single family residence worked best with this variance. There was also neighborhood, um, it's also part of the neighborhood character. Um, please do not hesitate to ask me um, any questions or the owner, Ed, who is here about any of the documents um, or proposed design elements. We're excited to create a new home that fits within the, fits within the eclectic neighborhood and enhances the built environment with quality architectural materials and details. We hope you take staff's recommendation to approve our projects. Thank you very much. I'm gonna bring it back to commission to discuss. Yeah, sure. Uh, could you bring up the uh, parking uh, of the garage again for, thank you, Brian. And so just so I understand that that was a item that was overlooked and it's brought up tonight as a discussion point. Yeah, the, the original plan had a 25 foot deep garage <clears throat> and then the, the second revision um, shortened the garage to accommodate the curb setback. And I think the applicant was still uh, considering whether a tandem space would fit. Uh, and in the end, yeah, I didn't, I didn't notice this. So I, I'm, I'm fine taking responsibility, but I think there, there's multiple ways to solve this issue. And uh, the suggestion is, you know, uh, if the commission is comfortable to allow us to work it out, it, it'll be within the walls of the building. There's a structural solution or just an abandonment of the stair and door. You just think, you think there's multiple ways that it can be resolved? Yeah, the, the building official even suggested, if, depending on the way that the joists go, there may be a, a, an allowance to where you wouldn't even need a beam. So uh, we, we believe there's three or four ways that this could be solved. I think we, we concur that that's a solvable solution that we can handle at staff level, that there's multiple choices that the owner can choose between. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think I might have more, but go ahead. Go for this. The loft... Uh, height is pretty low. It is. So, um, I don't know. Is there a minimum on how high the loft can be? Well, we have a rear setback that starts it out low with the that. kicked back roof, and then it and then it does extend out. But even at its maximum height, it's like four foot eight or something. It's pretty small. I think we're at four foot eight at the back. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'm just wondering if. It's useful space but that's for your you know yeah I think I think the owner finds it to be useful space whether that's for storage um, or you know other amenities in the house for him and his family there's there's very limited if any storage in a, in a tiny house like this on the lot um, and no storage in the garage for any equipment to take down to the water or anything can I ask a couple questions about design Mm -hmm. um, can I see the elevation slides, the rear elevation particularly, and the um, that one too? The 
I know we don't. So that's not a window. It's a uh, kind of a a void in the front of the second story facade, the big archway. The archway is just a big recessed or just a big opening onto an upper level balcony. You intend to put plants and stuff in there? Yes, the intent is to have planting on the railing and then also a little bit of planting bed down at the front entry. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on the right-hand side, you can kind of see that square um, uh, area with a different material. Uh, that's a breeze block that you can see in the center of the materials panel um, in the right-hand picture, which, uh, okay. which is a, a dimensional architectural element that has a terracotta color to it. And then on the rear, um, <clears throat> the rear elevation... I think I noticed a. I'll have to load the. Oh, sorry. What's not in the. In the presentation, um, I just noticed a, a, on the, the staff report there was a, a mansard roof on the back, with a comp. Finish. That that's to meet the daylight plane. Oh, I see. Okay, I was wondering because it just seemed like a really strange application, on the rear side. Just just an afterthought, and I know we can't really change or influence your design. I was just wondering, you know, what the. What the reasoning was behind that it just looked kind of funky but in just my opinion no i i mean i i agree that when we're clipping the project for the daylight plane it's a it's a piece of roofing material that isn't isn't seen elsewhere yeah on the project yeah um, but i think it was the desire to get the maximum head height and then flow off the roof in other directions to scuppers so that was a direct response to the daylight plane mm -hmm. um i suppose ed we would be amenable to making that just an all stucco deeper parapet that slopes down and eliminating the comp shingles, which then maybe makes it more consistent with the. It's just comments on the design. I, I mean, I don't think we can require that. <clears throat> Is that right? I would just rather see a parapet than a comp roof section on the back side, but I don't want to make that, you know. That's within your purview of a design. Okay. <laughs> I think we're fine to make it stucco. Okay. Um, and then also, um, going to the front elevation one more time, if you could. So those are on A3.1, Brian, which is, I think, sheet number 115 in your package. Maybe we can zoom in on just the front elevation. Okay, the plan, I'll, I'll just stand by, I'll pull up the plan. <clears throat> Actually, um, I, I passed, that was another thing on the the front facade, I apologize. Thank you. Thanks for your answers. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, does there any other questions? You know, on the southeast side, where, you, where you're facing the building next door, did you do a window-to-window -window analysis to, you know, to, to look at privacy concerns? We did look at privacy concerns, and that's how you see where we have transom windows versus egress windows. It's also on that right-hand side where we've incorporated that breeze block so that the balcony is not directly overlooking uh, the space below. That's good. Um, and that's more easily seen on sheet um, A3.2, I believe. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at, 3.2. <clears throat> so, um, so, this, so the, that long side faces the kind of that utility easement, utility and parking easement. Um, in the, the window that you see that's the largest window is an egress window for um, the bedroom that's there. Uh, after working with Brian and the neighbors behind that are most impacted from a, a window dropping into a residential space, uh, we chose to put transoms on the back and put the egress window on that side. Okay, got it. <clears throat> And then the, the high transom windows that you see, the little squares, that's, that's the public space. So the biggest window is in a private space on the property. Is there, um, in terms of the parking variance, is there a, a main, was there a main decision as to why not to concentrate parking on the lower story where the floodplain exists and not put the JADU somewhere other than level one i think with the the size of the lot yeah. and the setbacks and the height requirements it was impossible to get both um the two bedroom residents and a jadu mm -hmm. moving to the single car garage on the bottom actually allowed for an adu that could be class or sorry, a junior adu as submitted but could be classified as a legal adu because it is large enough with a separate bedroom and a true kitchen in it 
Um, and we felt the benefit was better for that rather than a, a little studio that's really not functional as an ADU, right? Yeah. So. Okay. Um, let's see. Do we have any further questions or do you want to deliberate? Yeah, just one other question. So at, help me on this. It's a junior ADU and it could be an ADU. I, I, you lost me on those comments. I apologize. Um, there, there are state requirements for classifying a JADU and an AADU, um, and I think this also can roll into the deed restriction requirements that maybe we were discussing today. Um, and I would defer to the town attorney on a lot of that. But um, the, the unit as shown from a square footage perspective qualifies as a JADU. However, the layout that was designed can actually qualify it as a full ADU and not a junior ADU even though it is attached. I guess my question would be, um, could, so could later on if we come back, have the JDU changed to an ADU? It could. Uh, it, be, it meets both definitions. So as an independent entrance, it's under 500 square feet. Um, it's got its own cooking facility and a bathroom. Um, there are some differences in terms of uh, utility connections. So an ADU proper needs its own utilities and meters. A JADU can operate under its primary utility. I guess where I was getting to is just a concern with being in the rental district. Then if it was an ADU, it could be, it would then go into the um, vacation rental program? It cannot be a vacation rental in, in either case. It, uh, it's the owner occupancy requirement that's really the, the difference between it. Okay, thank you. Which I think you can find language in condition 20 in your packet for that. Thank you for that clarification. Um, is it true that they could use either one as a vacation rental, being in the vacation rental district? Any ADU in the, in the uh, VRU zone cannot be rented for less than 30 days. Right. Uh, the main house, though? The main house could be. That's a, okay. Any further questions? Thank you. Um, any further deliberation? Anybody want to make a motion? Uh, yeah. Public comment. Oh, sorry. Public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I I skipped the public. Is there any people in the public that would like to speak on this besides the applicant? Hearing none. Oh. Thank you. Uh, Dan Townsend. Um, we're the uh, owners, the neighbors of the three properties right next. Uh, so just point of clarification, um, it seems like the variance requested is to allow an ADU. It seems to me it's posed as this ADU is some kind of requirement. It's not. You're, the commission is trading an ADU for a parking space, bottom line. <laughs> We're not opposed to that, but just want to make that clear. Uh, also, a question for Brian is um, on the landscape plan, there's specific landscape requirements, percentages. Just were those met? Does the commission want to ask staff that question? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, can we look at the landscape plan to see if the percentages are met? Yeah, so we'll zoom in here. So there's there's seven Pittosporum. Uh, there's a condition of approval that Pittosporum is a, a pretty broad species. So we've we've added a condition that those be a tree variety of Pittosporum to meet the standard. Um, Fifteen percent canopy coverage is only a, just a hair over two hundred square feet on this property. So um, two or three of those trees would cover the canopy coverage and they've had, they have seven of them um are you counting the banana trees is, is i only counted the the, the pittus the, the, the other ornamental trees were not counted in the, the canopy okay. um did did you want that doesn't really answer the question the question was were the landscape requirements met and not the specific type of landscaping but were they met the requirements there's a percentage for the front yard 
as you know, we know. Yeah. So th that was it. Okay. Thank you. Um, in terms of the landscape, was the percentages met for the front in your yards? So I the question I answered was with regard to the, the, trees. the canopy coverage. Yeah, I'm gonna look up the percentage. Non residential zoning districts, there's a 5% requirement in the mixed use neighborhood of minimum landscaped area. And all required front and street side setback areas shall be landscaped, excluding areas required for access to the property and public and quasi public open space, such as courtyards or outdoor seating. Minimum of 5%, and then in the MUN zoning district, up to 75% of the minimum landscaped area may be occupied by outdoor dining areas, courtyards, and other similar quasi-public areas with planning commission approval. Hardscape areas counting towards landscaping requirements must can contain above ground planters and other similar features that incorporate greenery and plantings into the space design. In all other zoning districts, these areas may not count towards the landscaping requirement. Any for concern? <laughs> no, not for me. Is there anything to add? I think um, utilizing a 1,500 square foot lot is, I mean, difficult. Um, does, that satis does that satisfy? I mean, I shouldn't address. OK, anyway. any other, anything else to add? No, we have a motion or any further deliberation? Um, or I was gonna suggest, I think there's a landscape uh, condition that we typically, a standard condition for landscaping. And if you'd like staff to make sure during the final review before planning, before building permit to, we can definitely do that to make sure the minimum of 5% is included in these plans or included in the building submittal. The rear yard is, is larger than 5%. So you would add that to condition 19? Yes. We can double check it. Yeah. Is Anything else? I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the project located at 1013 Capitol Avenue. I'll second that. Is Are those motions including all the conditions? Yes, I'm sorry, in the condition that we're laid out. So that includes a um, minor modification in the condition 19 in addition of condition 28 for the increasing the size of the garage. Correct. Thank you. Hearing a first and a second, do we want to make a roll call? Commissioner Esty. Aye. Vice Chair Jensen. Aye. And Chair Christensen. Aye. Um, item C is the housing element update. Uh, updates on the six cycle certification implementation and annual report. Do we want to uh, get the other commissioner? Grab the other commissioner. Sean will. I can see them. Did you? <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's okay. <laughs> Was it a new bench? The new benches, too. Yeah, we did it on the day. Oh, okay. It was 
a little warmer. <laughs> Good evening, Planning Commissioners. I'm going to give you a quick update on all things housing in Capitola, geared towards our housing element, our annual reporting requirement, and then also our lovely list of 80 items to accomplish in the next three years. So, um, quickly, quick update on our housing element. The last time we discussed at our last meeting, um, to su the support for an increased height from si up to 60 to 75 feet on the this. This discussion is entirely for the mall site. Um, and so th there was support at both Planning Commission and City Council to increase the height, to also remove the floor area from the garage calculations, to include objective standards to ensure mitigation of, of those two items, including uh, wrapping the garages as well as stepping the um, buildings away from the streets. Within um, when we got to City Council, um, the representative, David Geyser from Merlon Geyer, brought up that they still had one more issue, and that was the number of affordable units tied to the mall property, and that it financially would not be feasible, although the number of units was feasible within the new envelope. Um, that was an overburden of uh, burdensome in terms of the number. So following that meeting the city council directed us to continue to move forward and prepare the document for hcd while working with merlon geyer so tonight i'm bringing you an update on this to let you know what we've been working with merlon geyer uh met with them several times over the past two weeks we plan to meet again next week once i have uh, more of the language updated but in terms of numbers in your packet um additional sites have been or proposed within the mall um, area, which is, includes the area between Claire's Street, 41st Avenue, and Capitola Road. So you're seeing the added sites on the slide. And in talking with them, um, the and the revisions include the 15% for inclusionary housing. That's a requirement by code that they would have to follow. Also, we're suggesting that in terms of moderate units, that there would be um, that we can include towards our housing element um, a minimum of 5% moderate. And this is without including deed restrictions on those units, just by design and having a variety of sizes within the mall site. They'll have a number of studio units that would most likely rent at moderate rates. If for some reason those numbers don't line up, then we might have to look at um, other sites or go into further negotiations. But at this point, um, I think it's safe to say, and Merlon Geyer wasn't too worried about the, the, the extra 5% on there for moderate as long as it's not deed restricted. So um, we also looked at, so this is on the top, the four lines are exactly what Merlon Geyer Partners owns. And then at the bottom, um, the other properties on the site. And of note is that, um, the coal site is not included, nor is the parking lot that extends out from the food court and kind of wraps around Target because there's long-term agreements for parking there. We did include the area um, around Takara, Takara Restaurant that also has long-term parking, but it was included in their original 2019 proposal, and we think they could modify it, that that site could be worked with because we've seen them submit prior. Um, and this is just showing the two parcels that are not included. I asked um, RRM to include what is the build out of those sites, just so we're aware. And the coal site is significant at almost six acres. So it could generate quite a few sites in the future based on this breakdown. And then also um, that parking site, it's just a little over three acres and there could also be sites. So I, even though they're asking us not to include, I just wanna be, um, make the planning commission aware of what could happen. So um, I will be bringing, the plan next is I'll be bringing an update to city council next week on the housing element. As soon as I have the draft ready to 
put on our website for public review, we will do that. And that will start the seven day public review process. And then we will submit to the HCD. And um, I'm happy to bring this back at any time during that process, but just to get those, um, we're hoping to get red lines from HCD. So. Any questions? No, okay. Our implementation plan. So the housing element is set up that the last chapter is your housing, or not the last chapter, second to last chapter is your housing plan. It includes your goals, policies, and programs. We have at this point committed to about 80, 80 items. I will say many of them overlap, um, and many of them are zoning code updates. So um, in this table, I've I created, I've got a large spreadsheet of all 80 items. I've um, put them into different categories. And so on this, this slide, I really, I just go through um, the thought process of how we'll be doing this. So agency coordination, that's something that we'll be working with local nonprofits and other agencies to provide information to the public. Um, and that's just gonna be ongoing throughout the, the cycle. Developer interest outreach, we'll be doing an annual um, outreach and I'm hoping to do this in May so that during affordable housing month and we can do a lot of our agency coordination at that time too by having some type of open house and inviting nonprofits to talk and i'll bring more to you on that in the future but that's the goal is to kind of host an event and let people know what we are doing in terms of housing as well as hear from the nonprofits on what other resources are out there um, emergency rental assistance this is a program we already have in place and it's um, managed by a third party so that that's a requirement, but we've, we're already doing that, so that bought, we, we continue to fund that every year. A fee study update, this is due in 2026. It's dependent on whether or not our inclusionary housing is working. Right now it is working just fine, but if, if we run into more issues because of current economics, we'll have to relook at that study. Um, we just finished that in 2020, I wanna say, so pretty recent. Home buyer assistance program. Um, that program will be utilizing redevelopment funds. We have some housing redevelopment funds and I'll be bringing that program forward soon. Uh, I'm gonna start working with our city attorney and looking at other programs that are available. I know Watsonville has a successful program that can get up to, I think, $20,000 in home buyer assistance. And that would be either a grant or a loan program, most, most likely a silent second loan so that the money would come back into our housing fund over time. Um, and then a buyer's assistance administration, the, the administration of the ongoing process in which we would use a third party like um, the housing authority to carry that out. And then the incentives, we've already started those discussions um, and that's related to the update of the zoning code. Our mobile home pro programs will be ongoing. We'll be monitoring our rent control and if there's ever an opportunity for purchase and how we can assist. Um, progress reports and monitoring, that's ongoing. I'm gonna show you what we produced in 2023 next. Public information, again, that, that kind of ties into those developer interest outreach and really inviting all of the community members to come together and talk about housing for a day in Capitola. Um, we're also going to initiate a rehabilitation program I think we set a goal of two units per year. So we'll have to set up um, just what the parameters of that are. And then once we have the program in place, we'll hire a third party to administer that program. The security deposit program is something we already have and it's managed by a third party. Technical guides and ADUs, we'll update those on whenever the building code is updated. And then municipal code updates, which you know we're currently working on. So any questions regarding the, the list? So this implementation plan is something that the HCD has looked at already, or they insisted on this, or this, they, how did this, how did, how did you deal with the HCD with regards to the implementation plan? So um, I, I grabbed everything out of the draft. What will happen to the, the 80 items next year when we do our, annual reporting, there's actually a page that you have to list all your deliverables, and then you have to tell HCD where you are in the process. So that will, um, we will be reporting on these annually. This is their checklist? 
know, this is my checklist. This is my list of how, just to let you know how we're going to be implementing this and what our, how we're going to move forward with everything we've committed to. And is this, is this implementation plan part of the HC, uh, the housing element submittal? No, this is your community development director coming to you to just let you know that um, I am putting together this uh, planning effort, and I think we can meet these um, requirements within the next three years. So it's really a staff-led effort to just provide you with an update and let you know that this is um, doable. So. With regards to the um, housing element, would, we've submitted everything to the HCD and we're waiting for their response again? No, so we're updating the information for the Capitola Mall and the site's inventory update. Um, we also have to update a lot of our maps, and um, there's a lot of information that because we've changed the site's inventory, it changes items throughout the general or the uh, housing element. So we plan, I'm hoping to, re to publish the updated housing element with the redlined edits. Um, after the city council meeting next Thursday, so probably that Friday. And then we need to wait a week and make it available for public comment before we can resubmit to HCD. Has that been pre-coordinated with them at all in terms of the rezoning of the maps you use and whatnot? And we, um, we were supposed to meet with HCD this week and it's been bumped to next week because they couldn't, they had to cancel the meeting. So we are we are going to coordinate ahead of time and get in it. They've been re they've reviewed what we initially put together but with this the mall reconfiguring. Thank you. Any other questions on this? Just I think I heard comments before from the commissioner with the list of things that you have to do. Um, how does that work into the staffing you have? It's challenging. <laughs> It is challenging. So um, I have had multiple nonprofits reach out to assist us with the agency coordination and also um, just some of the public information. And I'm going to be leaning on those, uh, uh, taking them up on their offer. One example is I met with Yimby recently. One of our items that we have to do is keep an active, like um, monitor sites which could be developed for housing and that's more of something that a real estate firm would put together and yimby um during this initial meeting said they think that's one item that they could take on um, another santa cruz housing group is willing to work with us um, on setting up the uh, affordable housing day in may in which we can have um, just local Nonprofits come and talk about affordable housing and also have information on our programs that we have in place. So, um, the city has a general plan fund, um, and I'm assuming that that money can be spent on programs that are required as far as updating the housing element as a source of revenue to hire consultants and third-party people mm -hmm. to help with this? Yes, and we also have a housing trust fund, which can also be used for assisting us with that. So um, there was a, our first budget discussion last night, or visioning for city council, and the items that I included in there for the budget were the rehabilitation program of about $30,000 going towards our city attorney to create that program as well as the home buyers assistance program. So right there, it's not, we won't be drafting it, our city attorney will be drafting it, and then uh, city council will adopt it. So we do have those uh, income sources to assist us with getting help. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we're technically in the builder's remedy period, right? Yes. Has anybody approached us? No one has approached us. That I, Brian, do you have any? No. I don't know if it's good news or bad news. I mean, bad news in the sense that nobody's interested in Capitola. Um, I, I, I did hear that, um, I know that other cities are hearing from developers about being approached. So I, we're not hearing any of that. So I think. Um, no, that's true. We don't yeah. Know you, um, 
The requirement for affordable housing is higher. We're at 15%. If you, for uh, Builders Remedy, it's at 20%. So you'd have to provide more affordable units. And we allow housing in all of our commercial areas. And you typically see this in commercial areas in which they don't allow housing because it, it's by right under Builders Remedy. Okay, next. Annual housing report. So where are we? Um, our annual housing report is due on April 15th of every year. Um, whenever you have a new unit within the, so we're looking at 2023, any units that receive their building permit are counted towards 2023. So the list you're seeing here is 15 um, housing units that were developed, 14 of which are ADUs, um, one single family, when we redevelop a single family home, it doesn't count unless there's an additional unit. So many of these were tied to the redevelopment of a single family home with the addition of an ADU. You're only seeing that um, when it adds on. Um, the good news here is that our 4401 Capitola Road project with 36 units, that was approved on January 1st of this year. So that's going to count towards next year's RENA. Um, and this list will count towards the eighth cycle because they do an overlap of the 2023. Um, so I also put together what we did in our last housing, in the whole housing cycle. So for the fifth, fifth cycle, um, 75 units were developed of the 143 assigned, so a little over half. Seven of them were very low, three were moderate, and 65 were above moderate. Um, so that, that will close out the fifth cycle for us. And these numbers are good, but I think like moving into the next year, we've got the 36 units at 4401, and then we'll be seeing at our next meeting in April the 52 units on 38th Avenue. So between those two, we'll have surpassed our fifth cycle on the first year of um, the sixth cycle. So that's an accomplishment. Um, with that, I'm available for questions, but that concludes my update on housing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Um, is there any questions? Anybody? Um, yes. Um, is there a direct entry form? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> the next one. You know, um, I'll probably have a more in-depth director's report for you at the next meeting. To the preparation for our first item tonight was quite <laughs> intense. So I will have uh, more information for you. The big thing was just knowing that Capitola Avenue uh, will be closed. The other, there was one other item that I wanted to update you on. Um, next week at the city council, we're going to be looking at the whether or not to go back to Zoom platform. Um, there'll be an update from our city clerk. I know that was something that came up on our list when, of discussion items, so stay tuned, and then I'll bring you an update at the special hearing on that. Okay. okay. I, I had one question. Um, I, uh, sorry, I keep asking. Any update on seeing with some, we we're going to have like a rendering done of the, I'm sorry to keep always asking, but I'm just interested to see what that would look like. We're talking about the. So we we did receive the rendering, oh. and the um, and it, it's it's great and it's informative. I think I'm, I'll, I can bring it to the to the planning commission. It was advised by our by Veronica Tam and associates that we not add anything new that we could get, so, so not add it to the actual housing element. But I think it would be a great. Um, resource in which we could utilize as an informational item that we could have something on our website about how to pr provide housing on a... In and I, I just think it's website. important like to have, you know, conceptual thing like that without a project connected to it or any emotion connected to it. And I, I look forward to seeing that whenever that was... So. Yeah. And then just one other question. Um, with some of the items that we had coming out of our work session was two meetings ago or something like that. Uh, was there going to be a follow back up on that, like um, on some of those items, like we were talking about the potential about bringing the architectural 
uh, review committee back and stuff like that with the game plan for having those items brought back and discussing in more detail. So Ben Noble and I are meeting next Monday to discuss um, how far he's made it with um, updates. We'll be bringing you, I think, for some items that it's really cut and dry, the actual language that we're recommending, and for others that we need more guidance on, we'll be bringing you options. So he's drafting and working on those updates. Um, so they're in the works. I don't have timing for you. I know our April meeting is extremely packed. Um, April meeting, you'll see most likely, as long as all the environmental documents are completed, the 38th Avenue project for mid Penn, so 52 units. You'll also see tree removal permits for, you've probably noticed the trees that are tagged along Park Avenue. Um, that's work that Public Works has identified. We, we had an arborist go out and identify all the trees that are unsafe. That will be coming forward. There's also a property owner that lives uh, adjacent to um, right at the end of Escalona or El Salto, Escalona. And they've got a number of trees that they also need to remove. So we're going to be bringing that tree removal uh, application forward. I think it's in the range of between 22 to 30. We had to issue some emergency permits. So it was 30 originally, but the number's gone down. Um, and then we have a couple use permits. One is for a new beer or a brewery establishment at the Capitola Mercantile. And the second is for moving the um, cannabis store that um, is on the Gross Road extension to that brick building when you come into Capitola on 41st Avenue that is curved. Yeah, so... Um, those, so you have a very busy planning commission. So we'll have our, our wharf follow-up special hearing that we'll have to adjourn to this evening. And then a very busy April meeting. Um, with the trees on Park Avenue, will there, I'm quite sure that will, I mean, I know there's some safety issues wrapped around that, but with the trail issue and all that, um, is there going to be some overlap on how that's connecting and that, so it's communicating those trees are being taken out for different reasons and it's not around the trail aspect. So this will be the city's, this is our our application to remove trees because of safety. So not connected to the RTC. The RTC tree removal permit will be separate. Okay. Speaking of trees, did I see last night that you actually put on your agenda uh, an update to the tree ordinance as as your list of things to do next year? Things that we can't get to yet, but we know we should be, oh, we need to do. It's okay. <laughs> that was, yeah. That and historic guidelines were, you know, we're not ready to fund those items, and they're really staff intensive, but items that we'd like to do. Um, we are, one thing that the, in the initial budget discussions that was supported by city council was to look at economic development initiatives along the 41st Avenue corridor. Um, and putting money towards a study so that we can take some action as the city to ensure the long-term economic health of 41st Avenue. So that's exciting. Great. Anything else? Any, anything else to add? You know, the only other thing is, would anyone like large plans for the 38th Avenue project? Rather, because they are, it's multiple buildings and... Yes. Everyone? Sure. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Then that takes care of everything. And we are adjourned. Till March 21st at what's that? Six. Uh, if we could do 5 p.m., okay. that would be preferred. Is that okay? okay? Yep. March 21st, 5 p.m. Thank you, everyone.